came with Gabriela Ayala. And this is my unboxing of Storytime in a Box for LS 5343 Youth Programs at TWU for Professor Naomi Bates. Even though my goal is to become a librarian at the secondary level, I decided to venture out of my comfort zone and into the world of preschool. Even if I'm not able to use these boxes in my library, they will still go to use with my nephew who is soon to be three years old. We're going to go ahead and get started with box number one, which has a theme of rockets. Our box contains a folder with an inventory list, which has instructions for the crafts, materials needed, as well as online resources for the librarian to refer to and song lyrics when applicable. The first book included is, look, there's a rocket by Edgar Arch, which is the journey of a rocket in outer space with a gentle line. Next, we have Tiny Little Rocket by Richard Coolenridge, which allows readers to step into the cockpit of a rocket ship and enjoy a trip into outer space. Finally, we have Roaring Rockets by Tony Mitten, which takes the reader on a journey into outer space with the animal crew using couplets. For hands-on activities, the kiddos will be coloring their own rocket, creating a rocket out of paper, toilet, um, paper tubes, as well as paper, and taking part in a sing-along to climb aboard the spaceship, sang to the tune of the Itsy Bitsy Spider. Box number two is themed around spiders. Now most toddlers are curious about bugs and this bug is this box sorry is designed to help them see that not all spiders are dangerous. This box also includes our folder with the inventory and other helpful information just like box number one. The first book that I that is part of our box is I'm Trying to Love Spiders by Bethany Barton which includes fun facts about spiders in a colorful way and helps preschoolers see spiders in a new light. Next, we have Diary of a Spider by Doreen Cronin, and this book takes readers through the daily life of a spider, letting us see that these tiny creatures are not much different than us. Finally, we have Ah, a Spider by Lydia Monks, which introduces us to a little spider that only wants to be a family's pet. For hands-on activities, the kids will be making their own pipe cleaner spider, as well as a popsicle stick spider web for them to go ahead and take home with them. They will also be taking part in a sing-along to the traditional nursery rhyme, the Itsy Bitsy Spider. Box number three is all about dinosaurs. Just like box number two, we have a folder with inventory and instructions. The first book is Tiny T-Rex and the Impossible Hug by Jonathan Stutzman and Jay Fleck, which introduces us to a little T-Rex who cannot cheer up his friend because he is unable to provide a hug. Next, we have How to Catch a Dinosaur by Adam Wallace and Andy Elkerton. This book sees a group of kids attempt to catch a dinosaur and come up with, and come up with inventive ways to do so. Finally, we have Edwina, the dinosaur who did not know she is extinct, and her interaction with Reginald Van Hoobie Doobie, who tries to convince her she is extinct. These three books teach the little ones how to overcome obstacles no matter what life or others throw our way. For hands-on activities, the children will be taking part in a dance sing-along to Baby T-Rex, which is to the tune of Baby Shark by Ping Pong, and they will have an opportunity to go ahead and color their own dinosaur and create Balancing dinosaurs using paper plate and clothes pins. Box number four is centered around heroes. So this box also includes, of course, our folder with an inventory sheet and instructions for the activities. The first book is Even Superheroes Have Bad Days by Shelley Becker and teaches toddlers that may have a hard time getting a grip of their emotions, other ways to vent and calm down. Next, we have Lucia the Luchadora by Cynthia Leonor Garza and Alyssa Bermudez. This story is about courage and cultural legacy and makes a great addition since it does teach our girls, our young girls, that they can be superheroes too. Next, we have Max by Bob Graham, which teaches preschoolers the ups and downs of mastering their potential. For their hands-on activities, the children will be taking part in a sing-along to Superhero Superhero Turnaround, which is sang to the beat of Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear, Turn Around. Finally, they have an opportunity to color and decorate their own superhero masks, 
as well as making their own paper bag superhero puppet. Box number five is centered around the theme of following your dreams. Of course, this box includes our folder with inventory and instructions. The first book is The Almost Impossible Thing by Basak Ag Agalglu. and sees a main character who is a bunny striving to reach her dream of flying, even though others tell her that it is impossible. Similarly, book number two, which is Giraffes Can Dance by Giles Andre and Guy Parker Reeves, introduces us to Gerald the Giraffe is told by the jungle animals that giraffes can't dance but continues to work towards his dream. Finally, we have Dumpy LaRue by Elizabeth Winthrop. This book sees Dumpy the pig want to dance even though his family tells him that pigs don't dance but he continues to follow his dream anyway. For their hands-on activities, the kids will be taking part in a dance along to Feet, Feet, Feet nursery rhymes since two of the chosen books have dancing characters. And finally, the children will have an opportunity to color in and personalize their own dream catcher and visualize a goal they have for themselves by drawing what it looks like when they accomplish what they want to do most. So thank you for watching and I hope these ideas will help you find fun things to do with your own preschooler. Bye!